Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Friday Night Fireside Chats. I'm your host, Roy. If you are new to this podcast, welcome. Friday Night Fireside Chats is a time to slow down, relax, and reflect at the end of what might be a busy work week. Oftentimes in our fast-paced society, it can be easy to carry this momentum into the weekend. And so this is an invitation to try something different. And the topics of these podcasts are generally centered around growth, self-inquiry, and self-understanding. And for tonight's topic, I will be sharing some thoughts that I have around comparison and jealousy. Now, comparison and jealousy is something that I've certainly noticed a lot for myself this year and much of it has centered around being an entrepreneur and building a business. And what happens here is there's, there's a lot of comparison that I do with others who are entrepreneurs. And when I look at them seeing, man, you know, it's, it seems like they're so, so much further ahead or they're getting so much more engagement with their content or getting more clients than I am. And it really quickly can send me into a place of doubt, um, bitterness, and not actually focusing on what I am building. The classic phrase being comparison is the thief of joy is a pretty accurate one. Now, for myself, this aspect of comparison and jealousy certainly has roots in childhood. You know, just growing up, having uh, a parent who would frequently compare me to my friends in terms of things that they did well that I should try to emulate. Uh, you, know, you, should, you should be more like your friend this, or you should be more like your friend that. And at that time, it, I think for most kids, um, it's during a period of, of life where we're generally very egocentric, so much is centered around the self. If something goes great, there's this sense that, you know, you know, wow, I, I did something good or I allowed this to be good. And if something bad happens, it can be, man, it's all my fault. So there's a lot that's centered around the self. And so at that time, hearing those messages, there was this egocentric belief that I, I was not good enough. I was not good enough because if I were, then I certainly would not be being constantly compared with my friends. And I imagine that most parents do not do this to spite their children. There, there might be something that they, they want their child to grow in. Um, and there, that would be another tangent to talk about, you know, how, how can parents do that for their children and communicate that in a way in which their child does not receive it as a sense of, I'm not enough uh, and I need to be more. But that aside, just looking at the impact for myself, it was that sense of lack and not good enough. And some of those old habits still carry till today and without anybody else having to compare me to another person. I, I do it well on my own. And one thing that I'm coming to realize is that comparison and jealousy really have nothing to do with other people, but very much everything to do with the person who is doing the comparison or who is doing the comparing. So in this case, using myself as that example, 
um, looking at colleagues or other people who are building their own businesses and feeling jealousy and feeling bitterness it it really has nothing to do with them but it has everything to do with me and my own perspective and experience and as I've thought about this, there, there's two factors that I can identify that underlie this, the jealousy and the bitterness. One being a sense of lack, and two being a inconvenient truth of something that I am avoiding within myself. Now, to elaborate on these two factors, the first one regarding a sense of lack, the, the analogy that I can describe of how that feels is, let's say, let's say there's a kid, there's this boy who is playing with a ball of clay, and he is thoroughly enjoying playing with this ball of clay because using his imagination, his creativity, he can shape this piece of clay into anything that he wants. And so there's a great degree of freedom and play and ingenuity with this. And so for him, there, there's nothing else that he thinks about. It's just what is right here in front of me and what I am doing. Now let's say a group of five kids comes across him and these five kids all are holding some sort of toy action figure. Maybe it's a Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, something. And as they see this kid, they all point and laugh at him and they tell him how lame that piece of clay is and how it has cannot compare to the cool action figures that they are holding. And then they walk away. That boy, if he really takes that message to heart, may conceive of himself as less than. Because if he, if he were not less than, then the logic would go, well, then they wouldn't be making fun of me. They wouldn't be telling me that my ball of clay is lame. And so whereas he never had that concept before, now all of a sudden he is struck with some doubt. And it can be easy to extrapolate from the clay to himself. So this ball of clay is lame because, you know, these other kids said so. And I'm the one who's playing with this ball of clay. Gosh. Maybe I'm, I'm lame. And now there's that sense of lack. So that's the best way I can describe how uh, sometimes I can experience the dynamic of comparison and jealousy as, as though, man, something about me is, is not enough. And the second factor being the inconvenient truth of something that I uh, I might be avoiding in myself. This example would be, let's say, using the same example of colleagues or people that I don't even know. Uh, people who I don't know who are entrepreneurs and have established themselves well either in a short amount of time or maybe they've been in it for a very long time. When I view their content and the engagement that they receive, the, the feeling of jealousy and comparison can point to what I am not doing that I see within the work that they are doing. So let's say somebody is doing consistent content creation and they've been doing that consistent content creation for 
a good amount of time. When I see that from my current vantage point, I can, I can think, oh, you know, uh, what is wrong with me? Why am I not getting that? Which would point back to the first factor of the sense of lack. But the second factor of something that I'm avoiding within myself could be, wow, I see all the content that they're creating consistently. Man, I'm jealous. Oh, but wait, I'm, I'm not putting that effort in to create consistent content. Because oftentimes, as I've shared in a previous podcast, being a entrepreneur, being my own boss, I'm the only one who is responsible for how I use my time. And without anybody pushing me, it's, it's easy to fall into complacency. And so there are times where I generally, not generally, I genuinely don't feel a spark of motivation or inspiration. And so when I don't feel it, it can be easy to just think, you know, I don't really feel like it. It's, you know, it's just not, it's just not the right time. So, you know, perhaps I'll wait until I'll feel better and then, you know, I'll create something or I'll do something. And certainly for the year 2020, I, I imagine it could be the same in any other year too. But with 2020 and all the curveballs it's had, that that sort of perspective of, you know, I'll do it when I feel like it, really doesn't serve me well because being my own boss uh, dealing with the curveballs of 2020 living in the Pacific Northwest with all its dreary and gloomy weather now that we're you know in fall and heading into winter it's It's a pretty big concoction of all the perfect ingredients to really test a person to see if they are serious about what they say that they want, what they want to create. And there's been many humps, many valleys, if you will, not so much humps, but many valleys where I feel, man, there's just zero motivation. There's just zero interest and inspiration. And when I'm in those valleys and then I see other people who are, are putting out content or advancing in whatever it is that they're trying to build, and it becomes a sort of unpleasant reminder of, hey, Roy, you do have a vision. You do have things that you want to create. And you're letting certain feelings hold you back, whether that's a certain fear about doing something or just feeling very, you know, not feeling motivated, not feeling inspired. Because the truth is if I, if I just sit around and wait and hope until I feel inspired to do something, that, that could be a long time. And sometimes it requires just setting aside those emotions, not repressing them or ignoring them, but setting them aside and focusing on the task at hand. And that's, that's something I'm still constantly learning. 
And so even though comparison and jealousy seldom ever feel good, there, there is a potential for it to be a helpful experience. A helpful experience in the sense of, hey, is, is there something that you feel that you're lacking in? Okay, well, let's, let's explore this some more. Are you truly lacking in something? Are you truly not good enough or not enough? And if that's true, if you really believe that's true, uh, what, what do you want to do about that? What are, what are the implications of it? Or, hey, it's, it's not really that you're lacking in anything and it's not that you're not good enough or not enough. It has more to do with you actually have a lot to offer. You have a lot that you want to bring. And there are certain things that you might feel like you're being held back by or you are holding yourself back. You're impeding yourself or shooting yourself in the foot. Here's an opportunity to address them. And I realize that's, that's kind of a counterintuitive approach because at least for myself and perhaps there are others who can relate to this there's something about comparison and jealousy where it's very easy to wallow in that experience you know oh woe is me um, I don't have it like they do and well it's because of this or it's because of that and, you know, maybe I don't even want that anyways. And, gosh, they're, they're such a, you know, insert whatever adjective you want to use. They're such a, you know, negative adjective person for this, that, and the third. And while I can feel maybe somewhat... I don't know what the word is. It certainly doesn't feel comforting, but while it can feel comforting or somewhat justified in that moment, it really doesn't lead anywhere. It, it just breeds more and more bitterness without ever having, without ever having one take responsibility and accountability for themselves. And so if you are like myself and are, very tired of that feeling of com of comparison and jealousy and bitterness that comparison breeds then invite you to consider this counterintuitive approach which is to turn it around back towards yourself and think okay I'm comparing myself, I'm feeling, I'm noticing myself feeling jealous, bitter. What is it within me that I need to address? Where do I, where is it that I feel I'm lacking? And how, how can I reframe that? That it's not so much I'm lacking something or I am inherently less than or not enough of a person but what is it that I do have to offer the the gifts and perspectives that I have that others have not yet shared and in what ways am I squashing this part of myself and perhaps I'm either working a job or doing something that while it feels safe and familiar really isn't serving my greatest evolution and highest potential. Cuz I think that that is always at the crux of it. 
I'm thinking to a quote that uh, I believe it's in the book A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Uh, this quote that she um, is pretty well known for, which is, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And so when it comes to who we are and the gifts that we have to offer, I think more often than not, we downplay them as opposed to really nurture them and share them with the world. And there can be many reasons for that, whether it was a certain message we grew up hearing, because perhaps, you know, it was a sibling who was jealous, or it was even one's own parents who were jealous. And that got put back on you. They put that bitterness and jealousy onto you. And so you carry this shame for whatever gift or skills, talents that you have. Um, or, you know, there's, there's perhaps something dangerous about what you had to offer in the sense that, you know, maybe what you had to offer made, made people uncomfortable in the sense that they had to really reevaluate their own lives and what, what they're doing. And so in both cases, there's, there's a sense of shame and being judged and perhaps an outcast for what you have to offer. And so certainly for myself, I think it has always been easier to play safe and the, the reasons and the history that plays into why that decision to play safe is the one that I gravitate towards. And now realizing, you know, having realized before, but it's, it's a continual lesson of, you know, you don't just, you don't just take a risk once, but you're going to have to do it multiple times. If, if it really is about living up to your highest potential and evolving, then it, it certainly is not a one-time thing. And that, that hits on that, that second factor again of what am I avoiding within myself? It's like, okay, there's, there's so much more that I have to offer, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of fear that's holding me back. Or there's a lot of, you know, I don't feel motivated in whatever reasons lie behind that. Um, it's like it, it's going to require some risk. It's going to require some not, not seeing immediate results, but still kind of like the podcast that I had on the patience, discipline, and consistency. It's consistently showing up, going to work, and the discipline of setting aside emotions to focus on the task at hand as it relates to what is the vision that I have and what is it that I want to build and create in this world. So I know these themes and dynamics experiences are things that I will continue to work with within myself because it's, it's a constant work. It's a continuous journey. I, I share all of this with the intent that it might be of use to somebody out there who experiences similar dynamics and can relate to the experience of comparison and how it can easily breed jealousy and bitterness. And that rather than seeing this experience of comparison and the jealousy and the bitterness as something that sucks, doesn't feel good. Let it be a, let it be a mirror. Let it be a little, little nudge, perhaps a little nudge in the ribs of, Hey, 
there's something here for you to pay attention to. And it has nothing to do with the other person, but it has to do with something within yourself. And that if you can begin to do the arduous task of undoing this knot, then you can find exactly what it is that you need to do. You will know exactly what it is that you need to do. And that this experience of comparison, dredging up feelings of bitterness and jealousy, can actually be reframed as a positive and as a gift that provided an indicator to what needed attention in order to continue moving forward again. And so with that, I will conclude this week's episode of Friday Night Fireside Chats. Thank you for tuning in to this week's podcast. And if you are interested in the work that I do and would like to support the work that I do, you can visit my website, www.sacredwildman.com. And there is also a link there on the homepage of my website where you can donate if you would like to support me in this work. Thanks again for tuning in, and I hope you all have a great Friday evening and a restful weekend.